Hey, what's up folks? Tobin. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about CSS and less and SAS and stylus and CSS next and all that style your page kind of shit. Uh, the thing about CSS is that it's it's really not very good. It's for all kinds of reasons. There's no real scoping. There's no real modularization. And there's nothing programmatic about it. There's you can't even put in a variable. It's just a not pile of not very good. And that's why less and sass and stylus and things like that came about. It's to give CSS some kind of functionality to it that a programmer really needs to have. Uh, I resisted using any of the preprocessors for a long time for a couple reasons. One, preprocessing creeps me out a little bit. I, I don't like the idea of stuff going from one kind of language to another kind of thing and that's what's running and has to be debugged. Uh, you end up with things not working quite the way you think they should and Debugging really isn't all that hard because it's pretty easy to see where things are coming from, especially if you're using source maps. But it's something I resist for a long time. The other thing is it doesn't do anything that CSS doesn't do. It just does it in a nicer way for a programmer. Which, writing your stuff in a non-standard way for that seemed like a... Uh, didn't quite meet the bar I need to not go with the standards. But CSS is so bad I ended up using less and uh, even just having variables is just awesome. So I've been using less for all my projects for a little while now and then I ran across a really good article I'll link to. It's very funny. It's called On Writing Real CSS Again. And it talks about how you can use some tooling to write in the next version of CSS although there is no next version, with future capabilities of CSS, and that will supplant a lot of the things you are using less in SAS and Stylus for. So you can write to the standard, the future standards right now, and then in the future, you can just uh, stop transpiling it to current CSS. So you're future proofing your code, and you're using the standard, and all that sounded very cool to me. So I tried it out, and now I'm using it on a project, and I think this is what I'm going to be using from now on. So this screencast is going to be a little on the dull side because we're just going to be writing and running little bits of code so you can kind of see how it works. But uh, it'll be fun. So I've got a folder with just a few things in it, a main CSS file, a, a CSS module, and it's going to be transpiled from CSS Next to uh, today's version of CSS. It's doing... I should talk a bit about CSS versions. CSS like HTML is no longer released in major versions, like there isn't a CSS 3 or a CSS 4. Each part of CSS is its own little module, and it's released and browsers adopt it as it becomes ready. So there's, it's kind of like a continual progress kind of thing. Not like a, I'm coding to the CSS version 4. Well, there's not really any such thing. You're just using a lot of modules that are associated with future stuff. To do that, we're using a couple tools. One is called PostCSS. PostCSS is a JavaScript processor for manipulating uh, CSS. It's really a, a framework for having modules that manipulate CSS and JavaScript. It's a very big project. It's uh, the folks that did auto prefixer do post CSS. Uh, lots and lots and lots of people use it. It's very, very fast. It's faster than less, which means, of course, it's faster than SAS because unless you're running libsass, SAS is a slow pony. Uh, and it's a framework you put other modules into. And one of the modules we're going to put into it is called CSS Next. CSS Next is a module that is, that is what is going to convert our 
future CSS to current CSS. So we can do things like have, uh, uh, you know, selectors and special selectors and variables and all kinds of cool stuff. So that's what we're using. Look at our gulp file. You'll see the node modules I installed. There's gulp, of course, to run our tasks. Gulp post CSS. There's our post CSS. And we're running three different modules for post CSS. Auto prefixer. Auto prefixer is something you should just always have, uh, no matter what you're doing. What it does is you tell it what browser versions you want to support, and it automatically puts in prefixes for stuff you need. So instead of writing dash moz dash box shadow and dash webkit dash box shadow and dash ms dash box shadow and dash what's opera o dash o dash box shadow and then box shadow you can just write box shadow and the browser you want to support and it'll put that other stuff in if it needs to so it saves you from a lot of boilerplate kind of typing post css import this is a module for post css that where it sees a at import in your css file it'll go grab that import and it'll stick it right in your file there so it's the way it's a way you can handle modularization uh, in your CSS code. So you can have eight or nine different modules. This module can call this module, it calls this module. And it'll string all that stuff together for you into one file, which is what you have to do for, for performance reasons. So that handles your modularization, and CSS Next is going to handle all of our future -y CSS stuff. We'll set up a task for CSS, and we'll make an array for our different uh, processors for post CSS, our add import, our auto prefixer. I'm going to tell you to get the last two versions of every major browser. Uh, the browser setting for auto prefixer can be as complicated or as simple as you want. You could say last two versions and then say IE9 and then say iOS 5, Android 4. Uh, you can have a long string there and it'll figure all that out and prefix your CSS as needed. And then here's our CSS Next. If you go to CSS Next uh, page, uh, I'll link to it, you'll see there's a bunch of different uh, options for it that you can put in or, or, or set, you know, toggle them to true so it'll, it'll read through your CSS and transpile those over. Here I'm just using three. I'm using custom properties, custom selectors, and uh, color functions. Uh, custom properties is variables and stuff. Custom selectors, uh, well, you'll see how all this works. So our actual task is just taking our main CSS and running through post CSS with our processors and then spitting it back out into this compiled folder. So here's what our main CSS file looks like. I'm doing an import here. I'm importing this module one CSS. And here I'm setting a variable. I'm just setting a color. Call it variable one because I'm not very creative. Uh, here's just this, you know, badass green. Uh, so you can do scoping at all kinds of different levels for variables in the next version of CSS. Right now, CSS Next only supports root scoped variables, I think. So we're setting a variable for green. And this is how you use a variable. In the next, uh, in future capabilities of CSS, you go to var, and variables have this dash dash in front of it. So it's a little bit wordier than, say, your at and then a variable and less. But on the other hand, at or a dollar sign is kind of confusing, especially in at, because you use that for other stuff in regular CSS. And here you can see you're definitely using a variable here. That's how we use a variable. We're importing the color functions module, which means I can take that color and I can make it lighter or darker or change the hue or alpha or saturation. This is really handy. You can set one base color and then manipulate it a few times in other, other places. And then I can change that one base color and then that manipulation goes all throughout your code. Now we have a div over here and this dash dash heading is our kind of custom selector. 
And this is being set in our module one. So if we look over in module one, all it's doing really, this custom selector is just saying, and we're calling it, it's like kind of like a variable, dash dash heading, and we're giving it h1 through h6 heading tags. And here we're going div dash dash heading blue. What that's going to do when it gets transpiled is div h1, div h2, div h3, div h4. Because module one is getting imported uh, before, oop, that's what it turns out to be, before, right at the top, that variable is going to be available in the rest of our code. So when we go upstairs and we compile, transpile that rather, and you see post CSS is very, very fast, we'll see it's, it goes, here's our main file. And that's getting this comment here. And here's our import. You'll see our comment from our import. Hi there, it's going to write that. And here's from our module one, which is right at the top. This div dash head heading comes out like this, which is exactly how you need to do it in regular CSS. And you see this P color, it's substituted this variable right there for regular CSS can use it. And for this A link, where we've lightened it by 90%, you can see this is a much lighter uh, green color now. It's doing it as RGB. And down here at the bottom where we sent our custom selector of heading to font weight bold, goes div h1 through h6 font weight bold. And there's a lot of other really cool stuff in the next version, custom media queries, things like that. In the next version of... Uh, next version, future capabilities of CSS that you can toggle on and post CSS and CSS next and write that CSS today. So you'll be writing with future capabilities and all the advantages. It'll still work today. And in the future, all you have to do is just turn off your pre-processing because you won't need it anymore. You won't be in a situation where maybe a less has had a major new release and some stuff is old stuff is broken or you're you're not coding it in some other non-standard thing to get to the standard thing. You're coding it with the standards and you're just transpiling it to where the capabilities are today for the browsers you support. So that's it. That's uh, post CSS and CSS next and how you can use it and why I'm going to start using uh, this stuff today rather than less SAS and stylus. It's really cool. It lets you do modular code. It lets you do variables. It lets you do custom selectors and all kinds of really neat stuff. So check it out. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.